Morning guys, we've got Milo in today. Milo is a pug that is suffering from some frustration-based reactivity issues. If you've got a Frenchie or a pug or a bulldog that are suffering from similar issues, there's quite often a common theme. The common theme is flexi lead, harness, you can walk where you want, when you want, until there's a dog. So what I mean by that is if we walk our dogs down the street and we put them on the flexi and the harness and we're stopping for them or they're dragging us to trees and dragging us to bushes and dragging us to X, Y and Z, a lamppost to pee on, a post box to pee on, and then all of a sudden a dog comes into the picture, a dog that they want to interact with, and then we say, no, no, yeah, by locking the lead up and we're trying to walk past the dog, what our dog then says back to us is, hey, wait a minute, you've just let me drag you all over the street to everything I want to get to, and now you're not letting me get to the dog? That's not fair. And then they get frustrated and they get angry. So the first thing we're going to do is start giving Milo a consistent set of rules to follow so he knows when he's on a particular lead that he's not allowed to drag me to anything he wants to. But I feel like once we address this um, control of the lead, these problems will just go away. Uh, but we have to be consistent with these dogs. We can't say on this flexi and a harness, you can do what you want when you want um, because of it just creates frustration when they can't do what they want. So I don't mind a flexi lead and a harness, particularly for puppies, but the reason we use it for puppies is to uh, allow that puppy to feel like they're doing what they want in the socialization period. Milo's not a puppy anymore, so he needs to be given a set of rules to follow. Uh, so what we're gonna do, as always, teach the fundamentals of the lead, uh, charge a marker, and we'll see how we get on over the next five days. Right, so we're just about to start the, the training process. I've done the, I've committed a cardinal sin. I've put a collar on a bracky breed, a flat face breed. Listen, his head's not gonna fall off. He is not gonna suffocate himself and die. I promise you if you teach lead and collar properly or slip lead properly or whatever you wanna use properly, the dog isn't going to experience uh, a lack of oxygen and suddenly turn blue in the face and drop dead. I've got some of his food in my pocket I'm gonna teach him what a lead means. I'm gonna take it very, very slow and steady because this type of dog that has had so much control all of his life is very prone to a protest tantrum and that's absolutely fine because it's different. He's probably never been on a collar so I'm gonna take it very slow and easy, start showing him that he's not allowed to pull me anymore and then start showing him where to find reinforcement. And as always, that's gonna be interacting with me. So here goes, I've got a little backup line on him Good boy. Uh, just in case he tries to pull a fast one, but we are in a secure paddock here. Yeah, good lad. Good boy. Uh, uh. Uh, uh. Yay, good boy. Ready? Are you ready? Good lad. Good man. Good boy. Right. We're getting a little bit tangled between our two leads here. Good boy. Very important with this type of dog, you take it nice and slow, nice and steady. Yeah, good boy. Yes. Uh, yes! We almost saw the big tantrum there. Good boy. Uh, uh, yeah! Good boy! As you can see, his food drive isn't crazy. I'd like for it to be a little bit higher. That just makes our job very easy. Good boy! Good boy! Yeah! Yes, good lad. I'm not worrying about markers now. I'm not worried about the intricacies of delivering food to him. I'm just allowing him to have a good time on this lead. Ah, ah. Ah, ah. Here we go. 
and I'm just gonna let him figure it out. Yes, good boy. And last, yes, good lad, good boy. The last thing I want is him slipping this collar because if he slips it once, he's gonna try and slip it forever. He overcome a greater struggle then. Good boy, so the reward was then paid out higher. Good lad. Pressure only comes when he decides to hit the end of the lead. If I move and he doesn't come with me, then he decides to hit the end of the lead. Good boy. And already we're getting somewhere, are we, mates? Good boy, good boy. Milo's got the aim of the game. Just follow me, look at me, interact with me. Don't pull on the lead. Uh, so we're ready to introduce a dog. I'll bring a dog along the back fence there, so it's just gonna be just, he's just behind the camera. Uh, we'll leave the camera where it is so you can see what I do. But I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. You're not allowed to leave the length of my lead and you look at me and something good's gonna happen. So with no further ado, we're gonna get out Ranger as we always do and then we'll work up from there. Uh, 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 uh. Yes, good boy! <laughs> if he's barking whilst he's inside the length of my lead, that's fine. I'm gonna make Milo's job just a little bit more difficult. I'm going to start moving him around. <laughs> the reason I'm going to do this is now he has less time to think about his actions towards the other dog. Yeah, good boy. Good boy, yes. Good lad. Good boy. <laughs> good boy. Good lad. <laughs> Good boy. Yes. Yes, good boy. Now we're gonna move again. Yeah, good boy, Milo. Yeah, good boy, Milo. Yeah, good boy, Milo. Good boy. Yeah, good boy, yeah, whoa! Ah, 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 ah. Range steady. Ah, ah. Oh, my back of mine. Good boy. Steady. Yes, good lad. <laughs> <laughs>